how we do this is we have um we have a basic mic macro intervention process and this came out of working with couples it's a distillation of working with couples and then we use all kinds of micro interventions right which i'll talk about in a second but if you're doing EFT or EFT with couples or EFT with families, you are trying to dance the EFT tango, the EFT tango. Um, this is a sequence of interventions. I do not want you to take it as rigid, um, sort of uh, kind of a manual. It's capturing a fluid process. But if you look at good, EFIT or EFT or EFFT family therapists, you will see them doing this all the time, maybe at different levels. In stage one, they might be doing these things on a more superficial level, uh, and they might be doing them much slower and deeper in stage two, right? But basically, you're doing this all the time. And this helps me when um, I'm off balance or I get lost in therapy because I'm assuming everyone gets lost in therapy. You're tuning into somebody's basic life story. That can be overwhelming. So, and you are gonna get lost no matter how hard you try, right? Um, so basically this helps me keep my focus, stay on target in therapy. The I tune in, I say, wait a minute, what am I doing here? Why are we having this discussion about her boss and whether he's depressed or not? No, 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 no. Let's go back here. I'll go back to um, move two of the tango. So that helps me. So what do you do in the tango? You reflect, mirror, present processes. Present processes are happening within the person, like how I, Amy deals with her emotion and how that just feeds itself and it just comes back all the time and makes her feel more helpless. You reflect, her, how she deals with relationships and that feeds into how she deals with her emotion, how she deals with her emotion feeds into her relationships. You mirror and reflect present processes. That's what you do, okay? So, um, and you do this in a, in a supportive way. It's like you're tracking someone's experience and you're holding up that experience to the person. You're saying, what is happening here? oh this is what is happening right and when you do that you 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 focus on that process whereas people focus on content a lot they get derailed they go off into their head you focusing on the process right so you know what happens to amy well you know she um lost her job she goes home she says to herself i'm pathetic i'm helpless I'm all by myself. If she calls, then she tries to reach out to her mother. Her mother says, you should have it all together by now. She hears that she's not enough, that she's not valued by her mother, that indeed she is the odd one out. There is something wrong with her. She zones out, she watches TV. She tries to escape from the pain. The more she avoids, the more this happens again. So you focus and mirror the present processes that keep people stuck where they are, how they put their experience and their relationships together. Once you have a sense of that and you make it coherent, could you help me? This is what happens in your life all the time. This is what happens to you. You deep, you press the down button in the elevator and you go into more detail in how people put their emotion together, you actually assemble it. Uh, a long time ago, Magda Arnold, I think it was 1960, said that emotion is basically an emotion, it's a process, right? It, it's got a trigger, a basic perception, body response, meaning making, which is when your prefrontal cortex comes online, and it's got an action tendency. Emotion moves people into action. It tells people what to do, right? So um, this is Magda Arnold. And I don't think, even though we have lots of wonderful people writing about emotion like Damasio, um, I don't think anyone's really improved on that. So as a clinician, this is what I use. So I'll, I'll literally go in 
um, you'll see Alison this afternoon when she first comes on tape, she says, I say, how are you feeling right now? She says, I don't know, I don't know. Or you'll see um, Natalie in a minute and I'll talk about emotion. She says, there's no solution to any of this. There's no point in talking to you. And I'll say, well, maybe one solution might be to listen to your emotions. So what's the point of that? That's, that's just gonna make it worse, right? So, and if you ask um, Alison what triggers her, what she calls her depression, she says, I don't know, I've no idea. So it just happens to me, you know, it just, and that's because of who I am and um, I just get irritated. Um, and it's important to listen to surface emotion and underneath. So lots of times irritation, anger, frustration is on the surface. Numbing is on the surface. You go deeper to what's underneath, right? So, so if you, you go in and you say to somebody, could you help me as you talk about this, what's, what's happening to you? Could you help me? When do you feel this way? I don't know. Could, well, you don't know? Well, you know, it's like sometimes I'm upset and, and, and angry and Nathan, this is Alison, you'll see this afternoon, <clears throat> tries to come up and put his hand on me. And I say, don't put your, don't, don't put your hand on me. And I just go away. I say, oh, I see. So could you help me actually having someone reach for you or try to listen to you that there's some sort of trigger there. You, could you help me? What happens to you? Well, I don't know. You know, I just don't like it. I mean, I don't like, you know, trust it really. It's sort of, I could say it's, it's not safe. No, it's not safe. Basic perception. The trigger is somebody reaches for her. Not necessarily negative, but it is for her. Basic perception. There's something unsafe. What happens to your body in those moments? I don't know. Well, what's happening for you as we talk about how when you're upset, Nathan reaches for you, he puts his hand on your back and something happens to you where you say, it's not safe. As we talk about this, what happens to you? So I, I don't know, I feel this pressure in my chest. I don't, I, I, I feel this pressure here. I feel, I feel like tense. I feel tense all over. I understand you feel tense. And what do you say to yourself? I say, um, I'm better off alone. I say, um, th there's no point in this. I just need to get away. I say, um, I say, I go into a fog. You do. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I, 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 I sort of go into this fog, you know? And um, sometimes when I was a kid, I used to beat my head against the wall um, in the fog and that, that didn't help and then I'd sit and I'd sit and numb out and eat zoodles I didn't even know what zoodles were apparently they're a kind of cereal I said oh I see so the so what happens is you go into this place where you feel overwhelmed is that right your body feels tense and I recap it all for her I'm holding her affect I'm showing it to her putting it together make it coherent ordering I'm holding it and and you say to yourself um, this is terrible. This is overwhelming. I'm out of here. You, you fog out, right? She says, yes, I can't deal with this. So the action is that you, you just withdraw. She says, yes, I just watch TV, or, which is interesting because that's what Amy does too. Okay, our society gives us a thousand ways of getting out of our touching our deeper emotion. You assemble it and then as the person knows that music and isn't so overwhelmed with it, you deepen it. You deepen it and you'll see me doing that this afternoon with Alison. You deepen it by going back into it, keeping the, the emotional handles, the key images people use that you write down in therapy and reflecting them back to them, staying with them, asking them what's happening in their body. So you shift, you start to shift the emotional music. And then when you have new elements in that emotional music, Let's try Alison, you'll see this afternoon. Well, actually what I'm hearing is that there's a moment of anger, but when you go into what you call your depression and want to give up, could you help me? I think what you're telling me is that there's this moment of almost, what did you use? Sadness. I think you used the word heartbroken, didn't you? Yes. 
there's this moment of feeling heartbroken. Um, and that's what you call your depression, this kind of heartbroken, yes? Right. So could you help me? Can you think of a situation where this heartbrokenness, and you could go two ways here. You can go inside or between. You could say, could you help me? Um, can you think of this heartbrokenness? Um, can you think of a time when this came up? Well, it came up with my dad. You know, I finally told him that my brothers were raping me after suffering in silence for years. I thought he was gonna kill them. And he just laughed and said that was just childhood mistakes. Aha. Uh -huh. So basically I might say, let's um, stop here. And can you imagine? Maybe you might want to close your eyes and imagine your dad and tell him what it was like for you when he turned, when you took such a huge risk and he turned and said, that's just childhood mistakes. Can we do that just for a second? And I'm gonna watch how she tolerates it. She might not be able to do it for long, okay? Or what I actually did with Alison in that particular session was I said, um, what did you do when you were little and you felt this heartbreak? I said, I'd crawl under my bed and I'd stay there and listen to her voice. I'd stay there and I'd go in the dark, I'd crawl under my bed and I'd hide. And so they couldn't get me and I'd be alone in my dark and all I had was my dolly and I'd hold my dolly. I say, yes, yes. So there's that heartbroken little girl under the bed. We're not talking about it. She has to be in it. Okay. So you're in, the, can you feel that right now? Can you close your eyes and feel that little girl, that little Alison under the bed, pushed way back with her back against the wall in the dark, waiting for someone to come into the room, waiting for the footsteps, holding onto your dolly. Yes, mm -hmm. that's so hard, right. I'm holding her with my voice. Yeah, and with my slowed down pacing. If you're going to work with emotion effectively, you have to slow it down. Emotion is not the least bit irrational. What it is, is fast. If you want to put it together coherently and make it ordered and manageable, you have to slow it down. One way you do that is you slow down. Right? So, and can the big, strong Alison who decided to come for therapy, the one that's talking to me now, that has so much courage, could you bend down and look under the bed and see that little girl? She says, yes, I can see her. I said, mm -hmm. If you were going to talk to her, what would you like to say to her? She says, I don't know. I wait. She said, I can see she's scared. I said, uh -huh. Could you tell her that? Could you tell her? I see you're scared. And we begin to choreograph an engaged encounter with her small vulnerable sense of self. While I am there as a supportive person directing the drama, and while her adult sense of self supported by me is there, right? We're choreographing engaged encounters. They're existential dramas. They're existential moments or dramas with other people where the, the basic core emotions and sense of self were defined. We go back into them so they can be redefined. The most beautiful, people say the most beautiful things um, in these situations. The one that I loved was Alison ended up saying, you won't see this bit. I'm sure we'll use it in our trainings though. Alison ended up saying to the little girl under the bed, I've got you, I've got you now. You don't have to hide anymore, I'm here. Those kinds of emotional moments are the things that um, have made sure that I have never burned out as a therapist and feed my passion for this process because it moves me, it inspires me. I learn from every client I see and every client I see has ways of putting their emotions together that somehow expand my way of being human. Move four. They have gone into this emotional drama. They have gone into frightening, alien, unacceptable experience. You process it. So what happened here? You help them take it in. That was amazing, Alison. That was incredible that you could turn and say that to that little girl. Oh, that took such courage. 
you know, to put those emotions together. What are you feeling about that right now? You're asking them to stand back and look at the experience. You process it. And sometimes people have blocks. They say, um, uh, one, in one session, Alison said, I don't want to talk about it now. I don't want to talk about it now. I don't know what it meant. I said, ah, oh, okay. It's, it was very powerful, wasn't it? It's too difficult. That's okay. We can, we can stop. We can stop. And I'll go to a scene where she was very powerful, where she stood up to her stepmother and I'll resource her. I'll go into a resource drama where she was strong and powerful, right? So you process the encounter and blocks to really taking in what has happened and dealing with what has happened. And then move five, you integrate and validate. This is amazingly important. You validate what people have just done you help them integrate into their sense of self. 